Hey Defenders, welcome back. In today's video, I am thrilled to unveil the latest upgrade to Copilot, and that is introducing our very own custom-built case management system. Now, while DFIR Iris has been a great and trusty sidekick, we knew it was ultimately time to craft something that was truly are is something that we can mold, uh, shape, and kind of steer the, the direction of the future when it comes to our case management solution within our Seam Stack. So buckle up and let's dive into it. So first thing that you'll notice after downloading the latest release of Copilot is if I go into my connectors here, you will see that we no longer have our DFIR Iris connector. So rest assured, that was intentional. Again, we are no longer leveraging DFIR Iris. We have built, we are leveraging our own case management solution that we have built into Copilot. So I want to kind of walk you guys through a little bit of what's happening under the hood. Uh, I think it's important for you guys to kind of understand how data is picked up, how it is alerted on, because I want you guys to have the ability to create your own full custom alerting. And that was really one of the requirements for our case management solution. We wanted a way for that you guys wouldn't have to be dependent on us to build alert criteria out for you guys or if you guys build specific alerts for other integrations outside of Wazoo, right, such as like Office 365, uh, Huntress, Mimecast, CrowdStrike, any of the any logs that you're ingesting into the platform, we wanted to make sure that our case management solution had the means to be able to accommodate whatever criteria you guys are looking to alert on and bring that into the platform, which we'll step through here. Um, later on in in the video but i want to dive a little deeper into show you guys kind of what's happening under the hood so you guys can understand all right how can i create my own alerts and how can i take it a step further and what we are leveraging here to actually search for our alerts is actually going to be gray log so if you guys remember we've done other videos in the past around other tools uh, like Preco, for example, and Elastalert. So you can actually think of Greylog as doing the same thing. So rather than actually having to introduce an another tool to the seam stack like Preco or Elastalert, Greylog is actually doing the same thing in terms of it is running a search query against our Wazoo indexer cluster and saying, hey, do you have any alerts that match this specific search query? And let's go ahead and actually check out what that looks like. So here, if I go into Copilot, if I go into gray log management, and if I select my alert provisioning, we do have a few of these templated out for you guys as well that you can just quickly enable if you wanna go ahead and get it started really quickly. First one we have is our um, Wazoo syslog level alert. Do also make sure that you have our Sock Fortress Wazoo content pack added to your Greylog server. Um, that is also a requirement and I'll post a link to the video uh, where, we, where we actually walked you guys through that uh right now so you'll see it in the top top corner of the screen there if we go back into our alert provisioning here here you can see i've already have it as enabled but you can go ahead and enable it we have a few others for like Suricata and office 365. you also have the ability to create your own custom alerting which we'll step through in in future videos because so once that's enabled what's actually happening well Copilot, when it enables this, is actually going to send the request to Greylog to actually create what Greylog calls an alert. So if I go into my alerts tab within Greylog and select my event definitions, here you'll see we have our Wazoo syslog level alert um, event definition currently defined. And let's let's actually step into this and see what's going on. So I'll, here I can edit this. And here if I go into filter and aggregation, you can actually see the search query that's being ran. So here we can see that the syslog level needs to be set to an alert. If you download and deploy our uh, Wazoo content pack, you will get your data start to have a syslog level set to that alert if the Wazoo rule level is greater than 11. So by default, Wazoo, Wazoo's rule levels go from uh, one to 15. So anything Wazoo level uh, 12 to 15 is going to get this syslog level field set to alert. We also want our syslog type to be set to Wazoo. Again, that's part of our content pack. And then we also aren't interested in matching on anything Office 365 because we want that to be a separate alert. 
right? Um, I like to think of this uh, like grouping your alerts together, right? So I want to group all my zoo alert, <laughs> wall alerts, alerts together. Uh, Office 365, if I have Mimecast, maybe that's another one I want to group together. So think of these as like grouping your alerts together. And we also aren't interested in it matching on Wazoo's vulnerability detection as well. Um, we also want this search to run every five minutes and execute it, or sorry, search within the last five minutes and execute it every five minutes. So what does this mean? So this means every five minutes, Greylog is going to ask the Wazoo indexer, hey, do you have any hits for this specific search query? And that's gonna happen every five minutes and it's not gonna search all of the data within the indexer. It's only gonna search within the last five minutes. Otherwise, right, you'd be duplicating data and duplicating hits. What I can also do to make sure that this search query is actually operating as expected, what I can do is actually just open up the uh, search uh, tab here within Greylog. I can drop in my search query and uh, paste it there. And then let's say I'll change my time interval to like, uh, I don't know, I'll just do 30 days. I should have some alerts created there. And sure enough, here I do have some hits coming back. And let's kind of walk through our search query. So if I open up one of these events, First, we have our condition where the syslog level field has to be set to an alert. So if I scroll down here, sure enough, we see that our syslog level field is getting set to that an alert of what we have highlighted here. We also have an and condition stating that the syslog type must be equal to wazoo. And sure enough, syslog type is also equal to wazoo and not. So now we have our next, next condition. We have an and not condition here, so it cannot be equal to uh, rule group one cannot be equal to office 365 which yeah it's equal to windows so that checks out or it cannot be equal to vulnerability dash detector which sure enough that equals out as well so it looks like our search query is operating as expected and i always kind of like to validate hey validate that your search queries are operating as as expected so you can verify that all right when this matches i am going to get the hits that i'm expecting to to get um here if i go next and go to the fields here you won't need to make any additions or changes here but what i do want to highlight is to make sure that you guys have the customer code coming through so if you guys are a little familiar with already not only our stack but copilot as well you know the customer code is a big part of how copilot is handling the the logic under the hood and assigning uh proper data to where it actually needs to go and a big part of that is the customer code so and if you guys remember how that's being set um, when we walk through our customer provisioning within copilot which I'll also link to that video uh, right now. So even gone through that, uh, make sure you do go through that. Um, but here, if I go into Wazoo, if you guys remember, we are using our uh, Wazoo groups to set what is our agent label. So here, if I go into like, just like my Windows lab, for example, where I have my endpoint here, I edit this guy. Here you see we are setting a, a label of customer to that of lab. And if I go into my events, here we can see that the agent labels customer is indeed set to lab. And if we look at what we are grabbing within Greylock here, we are grabbing, uh, sorry, as part of the event, right, that we just defined and created for our Wazoo alerts, our agent labels customer needs to exist. And sure enough, it, it does. Because Copilot is gonna use that under the hood to assign that to the correct customer. So we do need to make sure um, that that value is there. But again, if you're following Everything when it comes to come to the stack deployment that we've shown throughout our videos, you guys won't have any problems there. Um, there aren't gonna be any notifications, so I can just step through this and then um, really I don't need to change anything, so I'm just gonna cancel this because Copilot has created and already enabled this, guy, uh, this for you guys. So you don't actually have to edit anything. I just wanted to show you guys uh, a little bit of what's, how we're actually defining that alert under the hood. All right, so now we know that Greylog is asking our indexer, all right, do you have alerts for this specific search query? And again, this search query can be, you know, whatever the hell you want. Um, this is just our template that we've defined, but you can modify this um, as you wish as well. So again, giving really focusing on the flexibility of giving you guys full control as to what's creating an alert within the stack and how that alert is populated within Copilot. So 
what happens when Greylog actually finds an alert? Like what happens when we do have an, a hit that matches our search query? Well, what it's gonna do is actually write that to a new index. So if I go into streams here and if I go into all events and Greylog creates this by default when you first install Greylog and I don't even think you can actually delete it which is good because we're leveraging this under the hood for our alerts. So when Greylog detects an alert, what it's gonna do is actually write it to this gl-events uh, index. And here this index uh, name is gonna increment every day. So here it's underscore one, tomorrow it'll be underscore two, et cetera, et cetera. But this is, um, this is an index that does in fact indeed within uh, exists within the Wazoo indexer, which is perfect because now we can leverage this within Copilot to actually get the data of the alert. So what's gonna happen is Greylog is gonna add the alert to an index and Copilot is going to fetch that alert based on the index that was created. Because you'll notice here, like we don't actually have all the metadata for the alert, right? We don't have like the rule underscore group one, et cetera, et cetera, right? But we do have what's important when it comes to fetching data out of the indexer, and that is the index ID, which is gonna be set to this guy, which is what uh, the Wazoo indexer is, is just anytime it receives the document, it's gonna create a new uh, ID so it knows where that data is and how to fetch it, and then also the index name. So we, so we know that when we read the data from this index, all right, we see the alert has been created and here is how I can fetch the metadata for that alert. So this is what Greylog, or sorry, Copilot is leveraging under the hood um, to then retrieve that data back. And once it fetches the alert, it's going to go ahead and actually create the alert within Copilot. So let's actually, let's actually check that out. So here, if I go into Copilot, I'll first need to go into my incident management and go into sources. Now, what exactly are sources? Well, sources again are kind of what I was referring to earlier and how we're kind of grouping our alerts. So think of a search as like a group of alerts. Like Wazoo, for example, is going to be its own group of alerts. Office 365 could be another valid source because that would be its own kind of group of alerts. Um, if I had another integration like CrowdStrike, for example, that would be another source of alerts. So think of a think of a source as like kind of a alert category, if you will. Um, so I, I'm actually going to go ahead and delete this Wazoo one, so we can actually go ahead and create it. Um, but here, let's go ahead and select Create Source Configuration. So first, I'm going to get a list of all of my indexes to whom I can create alerts for. Now, this is not this does not mean that we will only be able to create alerts for this particular index. What we're going to use is the data within these in, within whatever index we select to actually build our configuration for our Wazoo source. And I'll kind of show you guys a little bit more um, what I mean by that. But now, since I'm, I know I want to focus on Wazoo alerts here, I can just select one of my Wazoo indexes and I'll just select my latest one for my lab, which is 20. And now we go to the configuration module here within the wizard. So we have our source selected, so that's gonna be Wazoo. And you'll notice that this was actually automatically picked up. So how exactly was that picked up? Well, Copilot is going to read the syslog type field to pick up the source. So this is another very crucial field that needs to be set because this is what tells Copilot, all right, what source am I creating this event for? And when we walk through a custom alert creation uh, or maybe just even Office 365, which I'll highlight in the, in the next video, I think this will be a little more obvious for you guys. Uh, but again, this is a part of our content pack. So if you've been following along, then you won't have any issues with that. So we'll, we'll come back to this in, in future videos. Um, to hopefully help make it a little more obvious. Um, then we are selecting our field name. So these are all, this is all data that we can choose from that is a part of our Wazoo indexes. So here you'll notice all of these familiar field names. If I go into, let's say for example, if we look at uh, this virus total alert here, uh, say I have like this data underscore path. So here I could select a field name of data underscore Path. I can start typing that out and I could add that to my valid field names. And this is gonna be important because this is some of the metadata that 
gets created when the alert is created. And I'll kind of, <laughs> I'll show you guys a little more what that means. I think it'll be a little more obvious here uh, later on in the video. But you guys now have the ability to select whatever field names you want to include within the alert. Now, don't mistake this for the search query, right? And thinking that, all right, this stuff has to be true in order for my alert to be created. That is not the case. So we're simply just selecting what data do we want to include as part of the alert content context, which will be more obvious here in a sec. We can also select the asset name. And what we mean by this is the when it alerts will have assets assigned to them. So with our Wazoo alerts, for example, what's a good asset name field to use? And that, of course, would be, well, our agent name. This is coming in with all of our Wazoo events, right? And this is what tells us the endpoint or the asset that is associated with this alert. So we're going to go ahead and select agent name. One thing I do want to add with the field names is this is just a list. You can add as many to these uh, as you want as well. So you're not limited to just one. You can add however many that you'd like. Um, we're next setting a time field name. So here, for example, if I go into my Wazoo alerts, um, I have two options. I can either do timestamp or timestamp UTC. I'll go ahead and select the timestamp UTC. And you may ask like, well, why, why aren't you guys just picking this up yourself? Why are you, why are you allowing the user to input something like the time film asset name? Well, that's because we're not gonna have insight into all of the integrations that you guys want to add. Maybe when it comes to like CrowdStrike, for example, maybe the data that CrowdStrike's integration is sending into your seam stack, maybe they're using a different time field name. Maybe it's called straight up time field rather than timestamp underscore UTC. And you guys would need the ability to, to set that. So here, this allows you guys to define and configure what is appropriate depending on whatever source, right? Or whatever logs you are looking to create alerts on. Um, we are then lastly asked the alert title name. So this is gonna be, all right, what field do we wanna use that Copilot is going to use its value for when it's creating an alert? Well, here with our Wazoo alerts, a really good one would just be the rule description, right? That's giving us a description of why Wazoo triggered a specific alert off of this or logged this specific event. So uh, rule description would be a really good one for our alert title. Now, when it comes to our Wazoo source, what we can also do is just use the Sock Fortress recommend. So if I select this button here, this is going to populate with just some of the field names that we just think are of value when it comes to the alerting. Now, again, these aren't have to be set in stone. So you can remove some of these, you can add to some of these. Um, this is just our quick kind of recommendations to get you guys started. And here you can see we're leveraging agent name, timestamp, UTC, and then rule description. So I'll go ahead and submit that. And now Copilot is ready to create Wazoo alerts. So, so let's go ahead and actually step into what an alert looks like and how we use what we defined here within our actual alert. So here if I go into my alerts, which are a part of my incident management page. And so here we see our alert. So let's go ahead and check out what an alert looks like. So here if I select the alert here, um, we get an overview page where we can set the status. So I can set it to open and progress or close. I can assign the alert out to other uh, users within Copilot if I'd like. And notice here, not only the description, but also the alert title, right? Here we see Windows 6 check, virus total hit. Well, how did Copilot actually know to use that title to create the alert? Well, if we go back into our Wazoo source, look at our alert title name field we are using the rule underscore description. So if I go back into gray log here, look at my rule description, look at the value of it. Here we see it exactly matches up to what the alert title is created within Copilot. This allows you guys to set, all right, what field do you wanna use for your actual uh, alert title? So maybe like CrowdStrike, for example, maybe it's using a different field name called like alert underscore title rather than rule description and that's what you use to that's what you want to use to actually populate the alert title within uh, copilot you guys need a means to set that and so that's exactly what we are doing here so i hope that's obvious to you guys we copilot is using the value that we defined for the title to populate the alert uh, to use that, sorry, as the alert title within uh, the, the case management platform, all right? So also on the overview page, I can assign tags. Um, so I can say 
I can do a tag of please subscribe. And here I'll show you guys how we can filter and stuff on tags here in a sec. Um, but I can also step into the assets tab. And now here, look at, look at what our asset is titled. And if we go back to what our asset name field is that we're looking at is the agent underscore name. So if we go back into our wazoo log here, sure enough, Copilot is using the value that is associated with the agent underscore name to go ahead and create our asset name. And I can look at the actual meta details of the specific alert by opening up the source of the alert. Now I can also go into context and look what we have within our context here. We have a shortened amount of metadata that is actually associated with the full alert itself. If I select my index ID here, and if I go into source, this is the full meta details of the alert, right? If I go back into gray log, here we have the full meta details of the alert. Well, maybe this is too much, and maybe I don't wanna include all of this metadata when it comes to actually having my SOC analyst evaluate the alert. There's a lot of extra data here that may just not even be helpful, like the location, for example. That doesn't provide any valuable data to evaluate this alert really any further. And so that's where we include our context page where it is a stripped down version of that data. So this allows you to only highlight on, all right, what, what data fields are actually gonna provide us good value? And how is that actually being set? Well, if we go into our field names for our Wazoo source, this is exactly how it is being set because we are defining, all right, within our field names here for our source, what field names data do we want to include when it comes to our alert context? So if we look at this value, uh, so if we look back at our Wazoo source, for example, you'll see there's a lot of, there's more field names than just the few that we have here, right? Well, that's because this particular alert doesn't have these metadata field names such as data underscore win underscore event data command line. But what it does have is data path. And if we go into here, uh, back to our source, we see that sure enough, we did make sure to include the data path. So if we go into our raw alert, we do see that the data path exists. However, we don't see that data underscore win event data, like we don't see all of that data. So Copilot, since that data does not exist, is not going to populate our alert context with that. Now maybe another, useful thing to the alert context could be uh, something like maybe the data underscore VT detection, because this is telling us, all right, how many virus total engines actually matched on this specific file hash, right? So that could be something going further I would add into. And fear not, you have the freedom to, to edit these as well once they are set. So to edit, I also need to reselect an index name so we'll repeat that same step. I think I used wazoo-lab20, but again, it doesn't really matter. I just need to select any, any index name. So I'll select that. We still get our same results, but now here I wanna add the VT path. VT detection is what it's called. So here I can add in my data underscore VT detection. So now the next alert that is created uh, that has this field, where this field key is actually present, that's going to get added to my alert context. But also have no fear, right? Uh, we also have access to the full source, to, to the full metadata uh, within the source here as well, right? So here we can actually see my data underscore VT detection field. So the main idea with the context is just a quick insight into, all right, what are the important fields that I want to, to look at? And you guys have the ability to determine what that is. Within my asset here, I also have the ability to run a Velociraptor artifact collections. Now, do keep in mind, we do need to have a Velociraptor agent, right, running on this endpoint. But here we have the ability to run collections directly from within the case management platform. So let's say, for example, uh, I wanna look at the Chrome history for this particular endpoint. I can submit that and now directly built into the case management, we will get our Velociraptor artifact uh, runs responses back to us. So here we can see, all right, they visited YouTube. Uh, looks like they watched a YouTube short, right? So I'm getting the full URL and of course all the results that come back with uh, Velociraptor artifacts. But you have the ability to run those directly within here. 
You also have the ability to make comments as well. So I can make another comment. Let's say like, please subscribe and add those um, to, the, to the alerts as well. Um, and they'll pop up here. But let's take a look at our curl alert as well. So here, if I step back into assets, um, so again, we're seeing our familiar thing, but here when I go into context, you'll see there's much more metadata fields present here, right? So here, this, this event had much more of these field names that we decided to include on when it comes to our alert creation, right? And so that meta detail is all populated here. So here we can see a uh, curl, a curl was ran, it uh, looks like out to GitHub and it grabbed this, uh, all the things x64.dll and it outputted it to my user's public music directory. So something of something of interest for sure. Um, I can also, because we have a process name here, I can also investigate this curl.exe a little further. So if it now curl is of course <laughs> super common, I'm sure probably all you guys know what curl is used for, but if there's any doubt of the process name, I can also investigate it a little further. So I can select this investigate, and here we can see curl is uh, super popular, uh, commonly used Windows command, blah, 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 uh, file hashes that are associated with the executable, uh, what network ports it's usually associated with communicating with. Of course, it's gonna be 18443, that's gonna be Pretty standard. Uh, we can also look at the path of what it's usually run in. So here it's it, the directories where the curl.exe usually exists is under users or program files or Windows System 32, where in our case here we see it's actually ran under Windows System 32. And we can also correlate that back to, if I go back into my alert context here, Sure enough, if we look at where the image was actually loaded from, right? See, here we see uh, C Windows System 32. So while that's not as common as a path as some of the others, it's only leveraged about 70% of the time, it's still relatively, relatively common. So this will give you a little more insight into the actual processes that are being used as part of the Wazoo Alert. However, of course, the process name does need to exist, right? So if it doesn't, like if we go back into our virus total hit, for example, you'll see that we don't have the investigate tab here because if we go into our context, the process name, we don't have a value. Um, we can also run filters uh, for our alerts as well. So I can filter by status, uh, asset name, so I can quickly retrieve what assets are a part of our alerts, uh, tag and title as well. So if I say, all right, give me all the ones that are assigned to admin, for example, I can submit that and get that response back. I can also filter on my tag. So if you guys want to use some logic when it comes to tagging, I think I did like, please subscribe. So I can filter on my please subscribe tag and get only the alerts where this tag has been implemented. I can also filter on the title. Now this is like a wild card. For example, I see sig check is incorporated within this alert title. So here I could just say sig check and it's still going to pull back my one alert. If I change this to curl, for example, will now only pull back our curl alert. So you can also filter by title. Another awesome feature that I wanna show you guys, if I go back into assets, and if I select my alert timeline here, now Copilot is going to attempt to actually build the timeline of alerts. What Copilot is gonna do is attempt to grab relevant events that happen that on that specific endpoint that are associated with that alert. So here we can see we actually have three events. We see a registry, uh, event being created. We see our alert title, right? Curl exe launch with commands to create a binary file. And then we see that an executable file was dropped in a folder commonly used by malware. This gives us kind of the full chain of events that happened around this specific alert for this particular endpoint. And you can also select each individual one of these to view the meta details around that. And what logic are we using under the hood to collect this? Well, that is going to be that of the process ID. So, uh, Windows is going to assign process IDs when processes are created. And Copilot is going to leverage that to attempt to build out its alert timeline. So here we see our curl command 
And if we looked in the file, right, the directory of where it outputted that DLL, here we see that all the things 64.dll is under uh, users public music directory. So if we go, let's now check out what our, okay, what's this executable file dropped in? Let's go ahead and select our source. And sure enough, if we scroll down here, see, here we see curl was used, all right. So that's timing, uh, that's, that's correlating correctly. And then if we look at the target file name, here we see that it, sure enough, it dropped our DLL into users public music directory. So here within our alert timeline, within the asset, now this is gonna correlate to the asset, right? So if I had another endpoint that also triggered this same alert, they would be another asset added to our assets tab here and would have their own corresponding alert timeline. And what Copilot is going to do is since this alert is actually still open, if another endpoint also triggered the same alert, it would Copilot would add it to its asset list. So I would have two assets added to this list. However, if this alert was closed and a new and an endpoint triggered this same alert, Copilot would create a new alert for that asset. So Copilot is going to continue to add assets to the same alert where the alert is, is the same as long as it is still within an open state. And is some of the logic that we're using to try to limit uh, alert exhaustion as well, right? Because we don't wanna be spamming our case management with alerts. Now let's go ahead and actually create a case. So with these alerts, we can actually create cases out of these alerts. So here I can create a case for my virus total hit. And let's say for example, I want to link, and if I go into cases here, here we'll see our case created and we see our alert that is associated with this case. Now, maybe, and think of cases as a way to like organize your alerts. So if I had a lot of alerts that are kind of piggybacking off of each other, right? Like they're a similar asset or like maybe I have CrowdStrike as a source coming in and CrowdStrike also flagged. I also got a CrowdStrike alert because it flagged on that DLL that we were observing within the curl. Now that would be something useful to add to the same case. So it's a way to kind of organize your alerts into a common case. So here on my curl one, for example, let's say I want to merge it into an existing case. Sure enough, we see that case that we just created. So I can merge our alert into our case. And now if I go into my case and view my alerts, we see our two alerts added to our case. So it's a way for you guys to kind of stay, help stay organized. And if I do my drop down here, I have my alerts uh, as well. And I do hope that you guys find this super useful. I'm really excited to, to introduce it to you guys. And there will be a lot more videos coming in the future structured around this and a lot more additions uh, added to it as, as well. So. So that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one.